graders, it's Mrs. G. Today we're going to be looking at the branches of the U.S. government, and I'm just going to read a few pages um, from here. Our focus is um, creating a new government. I couldn't find this book um, to have the pages up for you, so I'm just going to read it like I would in the classroom and show you the pictures. Uh, and we'll talk about it through. I feel like you guys already have a good um, platform for the creation of the United States just by going uh, over the American Revolution in Unit 3. Uh, you, you have a solid understanding what occurred, the disagreements between Great Britain, the reason why we wanted to break free of Britain's control, but let's sit back and focus more on the government. So it says, creating a new government, the American colonies gained independence from Great Britain in the American Revolution. And if we were in the classroom together, I'd have Hamilton music playing in the background, but I can't do it here because it's restricted on YouTube using the music. Um, I just had to share that because it doesn't make me happy. So I want to play it, it's really cool. So on April 19th, 1775, in Lexington, Massachusetts, the American Revolution began. And you already knew that. For a decade, so 10 years, for a decade, Americans had increasingly resisted efforts by Great Britain to tax them Remember um, the Boston Tea Party? Remember the Stamp Act? And limit their settlement in the West. The British claimed the right to rule over their American colonies as they wanted. Those opposing views led to the revolution. They also led to the Americans announcing their independence in the Declaration of Independence in 1776. So the colonies declared they wanted to be independent from Great Britain rule. Oh, did I show you the picture? Oh, and then it's... So there's this picture. And the caption underneath says, The Continental Congress was an early version of what would become the U.S. government. So the Continental Congress is important because it was, again, the beginning of uniting each other, uh, like uniting the colonies to form just one system, one setup, one group um, to work together as a team. You can almost think of it that way. The 13 American colonies had become independent states. They were united in the effort to win their freedom from Great Britain. So they had something in common they all wanted, all 13 colonies united to break free. So that's going to be huge in this. Delegates from the states met in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in 1775 to form the Second Continental Congress. This Congress knew the states needed a national government to carry out the war against Great Britain, but many members feared the power of a strong central government. Congress finally wrote the Articles of Confederation between 1776 and 1777. They made Congress itself the government for the United States. The states approved the document in 1781. Now, so I'm going to talk about the Articles of Confederation. Congress approved the Articles of Confederation in 1777, but it took almost four years for the states to ratify it, um, to make it right, to make changes. A 1777 copy of the document is kept at the Library of Congress. It is in the Rare Book and Special Collections Division. Um, and I'll put a link, you guys, so you can see it. You can see the original writing. They have a picture. Um, so the link will be on your Google Doc for today. The Articles of Confederation said that the states would enter into a firm league of friendship with each other. Each state kept its independence and had one vote in Congress. 
each state had to approve amendments changes for them to pass. So now here comes the three functions of government. Um, and this is the last thing we'll talk about today. Most of the leaders who would create the US government agreed by 1776 that any government had three basic functions. One was to make laws. One was to execute or carry out the laws. The last was to make sure the laws were carried out fairly. These have been called, you guys, the legislative, the executive, and the judicial branch of government. So this is where it all starts. Uh, a Boston lawyer named John Adams wrote a letter to a friend in 1776. The letter explained what he believed was the ideal form of government. Adams government would have independent legislative, executive, and judicial branches. So this idea is just amazing how it came about. This is the beginning of our whole setup in the United States. And yes, it's had amendments. Yes, it's had changes. But how awesome is this moment in history? So that Adams government would have independent legislative, executive, and ju judicial branches. That separation, so separation of legislative, executive, and judicial, judicial being court, legislative being Congress, executive being the president of the United States. So that, that separation would guarantee a government of laws and not of men. So it's more... Um, it wouldn't just be one person, so it's a balance. This meant that leaders could not do whatever they chose, um, so it's checks and balances. We don't need a dictator. That's what Adolf Hitler was. He ran the whole show. We don't want one person running at all. That's dangerous. We learned that from history. A legislative branch that wrote the laws would have two houses. One would be directly elected by the people. The other would be chosen by the members of that house. The executive branch would have the power to call out the militia. The militia was the military force used by the colonies during times of emergency. The judicial branch would run the court system. They would interpret and apply the laws in certain situations such as crimes or business disputes. And then I just want to, I mentioned John Adams, but I just want to read this little um, box here. So spotlight on John Adams, and this is where it ends. Um, in 1770, a Boston mob protesting British taxes attacked British soldiers based in that city. The soldiers opened fire and killed five protesters. John Adams knew the citizens were angry with the British but he also knew that the soldiers deserved a fair trial. He agreed to defend them in court. This put the idea of government of laws, not men, into practice. Adam was one of the first Americans to call for independence from Great Britain. He was the first vice president and became the second president of the United States. So he came after George Washington. He was elected in 17. 96. What a cool time in history. Thanks for listening, my team. I have a lot of links so you can learn a little bit more about this. So take the time to go look through it. Miss all of you. Have a great day. Um, and again, always hope to see you soon. Bye, everyone.